These are the latest flagships from Apple and from Samsung. This is the iPhone 15 Pro Max, while this is the Galaxy S24 Ultra. And I want to do a comparison between both of these after using the Galaxy device for about two weeks daily alongside my iPhone 15 Pro Max. Just to give some context, I've had Apple devices for the past 10 years, and I haven't used a Galaxy device since the S40s, so this is a big jump in trying out the S24. But both of these are relatively similar nowadays, so I want to give a straight up comparison on what I think is similar and what's different on both of these. So let's get started first with the design. This year you have titanium on the Galaxy S24 Ultra and it's very similar to how it is on the iPhones. So you have this titanium color also, which uh, Samsung calls it the gray titanium while Apple calls it the natural titanium. I chose this colorway for the S24 so it matched my 15 Pro Max. However, here it seems like this is more of a golden uh, color while this one is more of a gray color so it's kind of interesting how Samsung calls this titanium gray while it should be like titanium gold maybe but that's just my personal take on it while this one is more of the gray color um, in the natural titanium one for the iPhone 15 Pro Max but both of these do have a very solid design so the sides are all titanium the back is glass and the fronts are also glass which look really good and getting to, to the front of the screens, both of these have a flat panel, which look really good. However, I personally prefer, I think, the look of the S24 Ultra because of the glass design going up to the edges, then also having the corners really sharp. However, there is a drawback with those corners. So since they are really sharp, when you have it in your hand without a case, for example, it kind of digs into your hand and you feel it over time while holding the phone. While I prefer the curved edges to the iPhone 15 Pro Max because it just sits better in your hand. However, the sides of the S24 Ultra are curved compared to the flat sides of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And the curvature on the S24 is better in the hand when you're holding it just from side to side and not touching any of those corners compared to how it is on the iPhone, which is a little bit more slippery with having those flat sides. But those are really small things that you can think about if that's gonna decide which phone you would like but it all comes down to your opinion. This is my opinion as an iPhone user for both of these. So everyone's gonna have their own opinion, whether it be the software, whether it be the design, or how it takes photos, for example. Everyone is gonna see something different that they like, but this is just my take on what I like. So getting back to the design, the front screens are relatively similar because they're flat paneled. However, the new S24 Ultra has better anti-glare coating, and you can really tell that this thing gets rid of a lot of the glare while the iPhone does not at all. I would really wish Apple would incorporate something like that on the 15 Pro Max because if you're in an office, for example, or a space that has lighting behind you or you're outside and there's lighting behind you, it's really annoying on how you can't really see a lot on the displays. While on the S24 Ultra, a lot of that is not there. There is still some, however, it's a lot better now with the anti-glare coating. So that is a great bonus to the S24 Ultra and I really do like that. Also, the other thing I want to mention is the hole punch camera and the dynamic island. So on the S24 Ultra, you have the little small lens at the very top and then you have a lot of screen real estate on the left, right and above and down of the camera. However, here you have the dynamic island which takes up a lot of space and it dynamically changes. That's why it's called the dynamic island based on the app that you're using or a notification, for example. So if you're ordering food, you could see it up there. You could see scores for different games. It does more than just house the face ID sensor and the other tech behind it. However, here you just have the camera lens, which is there and it takes up a lot less space when watching videos, for example. To be honest, I like the functionality of the Dynamic Island better due to the fact that it changes and it's not just there looking like a little island as they call it, of course, but I personally prefer that. But the screen does get brighter on the S24 Ultra, which I noticed a lot outside. I can see a lot better on the S24 due to the fact that it has more nits of brightness compared to the iPhone. The phone is physically bigger, so it feels bigger in your hand and it's a little bit heavier than what you get with the iPhone. 
but overall they're relatively similar when comparing the Pro Max version to the Ultra version with Samsung. So that's about the screens, but I really want to talk about also the other parts of the build. So the cameras on the back, you have three lenses and a LiDAR on the iPhone, while here you have four lenses. And the biggest thing about this is that you have the extra 3X lens on the S24 Ultra, while you don't have that on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. This one did come down from a 10X to a 5X, the same way iPhone has the 5X. The S23 Ultra did have that 10X, but now it crops in to get that 10X effect with the 5X lens. So you do still have that uh, functionality from the S23 Ultra. But the biggest change of this year for the S24 was that flat display. So long gone are the days of having a curved screen on the Samsung Galaxy devices and you have this flat panel. A lot of people are gonna be really happy about this because having a device like the Ultra with a stylus, the S Pen, it feels a lot easier to use when using a flat panel. And then also the screw protectors and installing them on this device are gonna be a lot, a lot easier than having those curved screw protectors that potentially do not lay flat and have bubbles on the sides, which is pretty annoying if you use screw protectors. But the other thing I want to mention is the sides and the other functions of the device. So here you have a volume rocker on the S24 Ultra alongside the power button. Then you have on the bottom a SIM card slot, which does not exist on the iPhones anymore, especially the US versions, because they have two eSIMs now. While this one still gives you eSIM functionality, but you also get the ability to have that physical SIM card slot. You have the USB-C port on the bottom, which also exists on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. You have the speaker hole, and then you have this amazing S Pen. So the S Pen is a really neat feature to use with this device. It used to be on the Notes back in the day when they used to offer the Samsung Galaxy Notes, but then they kind of merged it into this one device that has everything, which is why it's called the Ultra. And the S Pen is really cool to use. Um, mostly what I used it for when I was testing this out was taking photos with it by clicking the button on it and then using some of the new Galaxy AI features that are offered on the Samsung device. But they're not offered, of course, on the iPhone. Maybe we might get them with uh, iOS 18 and then also the new iPhones this year in September. However, we will see what we get when the time comes. But the features are cool, the Samsung S Pen functionality is cool, but I found myself using more of the phone with just my fingers than using the stylus because technically I have to hold the phone with my left hand and then use the stylus with my right hand. So I'm taking up two hands to use that functionality. So I just prefer using the phone in my right hand, which is a lot easier. And I didn't really find myself using the S Pen that much. So back in the day, you did have the Android devices having less build quality than the iPhone, and that's really where the iPhone shined. But now, when I unbox this, for example, if you haven't watched that video, then please watch my unboxing of the S24 Ultra. But when I unboxed it, I could tell you that this thing from first glance was amazing, and I still think it's amazing in design because they have came a long way with the designing of this thing. No longer the days where I have to say iPhone takes the design champ because here you have a really premium device as well. And just even though I use an iPhone every day, I think the Galaxy devices still shine in that aspect because they just look more premium nowadays than the simplistic look of the iPhones. That's just my personal take. But overall, the design is similar, so that shouldn't be really a deciding factor that much on which one you should choose. Now let's talk about the price. This is a little bit more costly than the iPhone, so that's also a difference from back in the day that you don't have the Galaxy devices that much cheaper than the iPhones. Now with this one being more expensive, price shouldn't really be the deciding factor, I think, on choosing one or the other since they're so similar in price, but you don't really have a big gap to say one's definitely better for the price than the other because both of them are extremely similar in price and features nowadays. So that doesn't really play a factor, I think, in choosing which one you would like. And let's get into the operating system. So of course this one runs iOS 17, while here you have Android. And the difference with both of these is that Apple has a more built out ecosystem that pretty much allows you to you know, use multiple Apple devices like a Mac, a HomePod, an Apple TV, iPad, 
and the new Vision Pro and everything just kind of syncs together while Samsung is starting to build out their ecosystem with their Galaxy watches, earbuds, and their computers, but their computers are Windows based. So you don't really get that Mac functionality, of course, compared that you would get with using an iPhone. And that's something that I really look forward to when using a computer. I really like Mac OS over Windows. And I can tell you that, you know, not having that option on the Galaxy side to sync up to my Mac is kind of a bummer which I would prefer if something like that could ever happen, you know, but I don't think that would ever happen, to be honest. So that's one of the things that pulls me back from getting a device like the S24 as my daily driver, due to the fact that the ecosystem is just so good on the Apple iPhone, and you don't really get that anywhere else in any other device. For now, maybe Samsung's gonna catch up in the long run, but for now, I still prefer the ecosystem that you get with the Apple devices. And the operating systems are very similar. I mean, back in the day, there was a lot of changes between both of these and one had a lot more features than the other. However, now I feel like the features are relatively similar and there's no longer a big difference between what one has or the other. It's just renamed in a different type of feature, but it's the exact same thing. And I noticed that along using both of these and I can tell you that a lot of stuff is very, very much the same. So, you know, you don't really have that much of a difference between both of these. You do get more customization, of course, on the Android side. You get to change a lot of things that you don't get to choose on the iPhone because the iPhone is more locked down. While you can change colors of text here, you can change the font styles with really tacky styles. You can do your own wallpapers and different styles. You can have notifications light up the entire bezels of the screen. There's so many things that you can customize on this device that do not exist on the iPhone, which if you're one of those person that wants to make your device more personable, then I would say definitely go for the Samsung Galaxy S24 or any other Android device, of course, that has all those features. But screen wise, of course, the S24 does get that better brightness. I don't really notice that much of a difference between the display colors between both of these. They look very really similar and the brightness is just better on the S24 Ultra when you're using it. However, I can say that I really like both of these devices. The cameras though, since it has more lenses on the S24, you have that 200 megapixels, is a bit um, more on paper. However, I don't feel like the photos are better on the S24 compared to the iPhone. The iPhone has more realistic looking photos compared to the S24. And I can tell you that I still prefer the iPhone 15 Pro Max photos better. But video wise, also the iPhone 15 Pro Max does shine a bit better compared to the S24 in my personal opinion. So that's my take on the cameras. Here you can see there's a couple of photos side by side. You can decide which style you like better, but there's always gonna be people that say one looks better than the other and the other people are gonna say the opposite. So it just depends on what you're looking for when getting a device like these and spending this much money to see which one you honestly like the most. But I did find a couple of things in the Android operating system a little bit annoying with me using iOS for the past 10 years. The Android operating system does have more customization. However, for example, within the settings menu, when I was starting to set this thing up and looking for specific settings, it has the same setting screens within different settings in the settings menu. So basically you could find the Galaxy AI features that are new to this device in one place in settings and then you can find it in another place in settings. So I'm like, which one am I supposed to be going to to change? Of course, when you change it in one, it changes in the other because it's the exact same setting, but why is it found within different menus? And that's kind of confusing because I've been used to the simplistic design of the operating system on iPhone. Maybe I'm kind of spoiled with that, but I did not really like that on the Galaxy device, especially when setting up in the beginning, but once it was set up, it's fine. Just in the beginning, I noticed a lot of things are hidden behind menus, which get really annoying when looking for all of these different features and deciding which one you really want to choose and go for. Let's also talk about the battery life. So side by side, I ran these for two weeks and using the same apps on both of them. And I can tell you that the iPhone does not last as long as the Galaxy device, which makes sense because you have a bigger battery 
on the Galaxy device compared to the iPhone. The iPhone was about five to 10% less at any point of time that I looked at both of these devices and they were both running 5G of course. And I can tell you that the iPhone does not last as long, which is kind of a bummer, but you know, it makes sense with the amount of battery capacity you have on the iPhone compared to the Galaxy device. So I do give the Galaxy device a win, of course, on the battery life because it definitely is there. I do really like that it lasts that long. And the charging aspect from it is pretty interesting as well because on these devices with a USB-C cable that measures wattage, I get about 27, while here you can get up to 45 with a fast charger. But both of these devices do include 15 watts of wireless charging. So let's talk about the wireless charging because it's very interesting. So the iPhone has MagSafe 15 watts, and then you also get the Qi 2 charging for 15 watts if you have a Qi 2 charger, of course, which came out this year recently around CES. But this device, you get 15 watts of wireless charging, but it does not have Qi 2 wireless charging. And that's a big bummer because, for example, if you're in a household that has iPhones and uh, Android devices like the Galaxy, then it would have been a lot better if it had Qi 2 wireless charging because it would have had the magnets which you could use MagSafe accessories with or MagSafe chargers that are not flat on a desk. For example, the floating ones. And that's kind of a bummer, but it's easily fixable with a Pataka case, for example. They have a really nice slim case that has magnets or any other case that has magnets for the S24 Ultra. But I really wish they included uh, the Qi 2 wireless standard on the Galaxy devices because this phone the 15 Pro Max did come out in September and it already has it. So I'm kind of shocked that the S24 Ultra did not have the Qi 2 wireless charging. But you know, it's not that big of a, a deal. You, like I said, you can easily buy a case and it easily works with MagSafe accessories and still charges that 15 watts. But the wire charging is of course better on the Galaxy devices. I never found a time where any of them were slower than the other. They're both incredibly fast. The animations are a little bit quicker, I think, on the Galaxy device compared to the iPhone, but they are really, really fast, and it should not be a deciding factor on which one you should choose. Yes, this one does have Apple's own chip, while the, the S24 Ultra has the Snapdragon processors, which they've had for quite a while. And I can tell you that it's pretty much head to head, to be honest, with speed of opening apps, closing apps, doing multitasking, which is possible, of course, better on the S24 because you can do a window within an app from another app, which is a lot easier to you know, navigate multiple different apps while you can only do that one at a time on the iPhone, besides if you're watching a video, of course. But it's pretty cool that you could do that with pretty much a lot of the apps on the Galaxy device, which I find really convenient and easy to use. And also want to talk about the AI features. So they are really cool on the Galaxy device. However, I never found myself uh, a time where I use this daily. I mean, it was cool in the beginning. I tested them out. I showed others how it works, which is really cool. That's what all the commercials are about, of course. And it's, it's a cool thing to have in the beginning, but then you kind of get used to the fact that it's there and like you don't really use it as much. And then going back to the iPhone, I don't really notice the lack of them. iPhone might get it later this year in a similar fashion. So that shouldn't really be also a deciding factor if you, if you should get it, especially if it's coming to the older uh, Samsung devices later down the road with a software update. But I did find it really cool. Maybe the older phones will get some of the features, but this one does have specific features because of the AI in the processor. So we're not sure exactly if and when any of these features will come to older Galaxy devices. But the AI features are definitely cool to have, especially like the circle to search, to look for stuff with the S Pen when you don't know what it is in a video, for example, or in a photo. And then you also have the ability to remove different parts of a photo if you don't want it. That's also cool. But the coolest thing that I found was the fact that if I took a crooked photo of something, then I can straighten it and then it could generatively fill in the remaining background without me cropping into the photo to straighten it which I've used a lot on this phone, especially if the photo is not perfect. And I can tell you that that's my favorite AI feature from all of them on this device. But like I said, it's not a must. You could probably download a different app that does the same thing for you, but it's cool to have built in on the Galaxy devices compared to the iPhone. 
And that's my take on both of these. I didn't really want to go too in depth in the uh, operating systems because there's always going to be someone that's going to say, oh, iOS is better or Android is better. It just depends on preference. So there's not really a reason to, you know, go into those side by side because this is a comparison between both of these devices and not just the operating systems, which I think that, you know, there's plenty of videos out there that explain the differences between both. But I think and personally prefer the ecosystem that Apple has with the iPhones and all the other Apple devices compared to the Galaxy device. But that's just my take. You can form your opinion based on what I've provided or what you think is better. And that's about it. If you like this video, then definitely give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you have any additional questions in the comments. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Zanif Tech is out.